This tutorial is all about ions, which are charged particles. They're atoms which have lost or gained electrons in order to form negative or positive ions. The electronic structure of an atom is really, really important. And it's noticeable that elements with a full outer shell are very stable. This has led scientists to realize that attaining a full shell is important and that metal atoms will lose their few outer electrons to form positive ions and non-metal atoms will gain one or two electrons in order to form negative ions which have got full outer shells. The metals are here on the left hand side. They tend to have only one or two outer electrons whereas the non-metals on this side of the table tend to have almost full shells uh, remember a full shell has got eight electrons so if it's got six or seven it's nearly full and in order to get a full shell it would need to gain only a couple of electrons. Group zero on the right hand side of the periodic table here is composed of very very stable elements and scientists have put forward that they are stable because they've got full outer shells and therefore other atoms of elements wish to lose or gain electrons in order to get full shells because that makes them more stable and those atoms will uh, react with other atoms in order to do this. Here's sodium, a metal in group one of the periodic table on the left hand side of the periodic table and sodium has got two and then eight and then one electron. Now in order for sodium to get a full outer shell I guess it could either gain seven electrons or probably more easily it will lose one electron. If it loses that one electron it's got no need for that shell and the next shell will be a full shell so its outer shell would be full. This is in fact what sodium does in order to form an iron. It loses its outer electron, let's not worry where to for the time being, and so it attains a full outer shell of eight electrons. Now this affects some of the mathematics, it affects some of the sums, because originally the sodium atom with 11 protons, like all atoms, would have had an equal number of electrons, 11 electrons. Of course, neutrons have got no charge, so we don't have to worry about those. So the 11 pluses added to the 11 minuses of the electrons would have given overall the sodium atom no charge. No news there. But the sodium ion, you see, has still got 11 positive protons, but has dropped an electron and has only got 10 electrons. That means that overall, doing your maths like positive and negative numbers in maths, we've got plus 11 added to minus 10, and you end up with a 1 plus charge. So this ion, now this sodium atom, which has lost an electron, become an ion and overall has a positive charge. Now metal ions generally will lose electrons in order to form this more stable electronic arrangement, a full outer shell. Chlorines are non-metal found on the right hand side of the table in group 7 because it's got 7 outer electrons. So how would chlorine get a full outer shell? Well, I guess it could lose all of those seven electrons or more easily it would just gain one extra one to give it a full shell of eight. And in fact, that's what it does. The chlorine atom reacts and gains an additional electron. That gives it a full shell of eight electrons and that makes the chloride ion more stable. But what would be the charge on this chloride ion having gained an electron? Well, the chlorine atom was neutrally charged, had no charge at all, because it had 17 protons and being a neutral atom would have had 17 electrons to balance them out, no charge overall. But now that the chloride ion has gained an extra electron, it's now got one more electron, one more negative charge than positive, and so overall it's got a negative charge. So when we draw this chloride ion, we put a square bracket around it and we put a negative charge outside to show that the whole ion's got a negative charge. Non-metal ions, like this chlorine, gain an electron or gain electrons in order to get a full outer shell which is more stable. Magnesium with 12 protons, 12 neutrons and 12 electrons would have a nucleus, 12 protons, 12 neutrons and 1, 2, 
3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 electrons. To get a full outer shell, what it would do is it would lose 2 electrons. It's now lost the need for those two outer electrons, so it's now got a full outer shell. Whereas before, in the atom, it had 12 protons, which is 12 pluses, 12 neutrons, no charge, and 12 electrons, 12 minuses, and therefore zero charge. Now, as an ion, it's got 12 protons, 12 plus charges, still got 12 neutrons, Nucleus isn't affected, no charge there, but it's now only got 10 electrons, so it's only got 10 minus charges. So overall, it's got a 2 plus charge. And we would draw it with a square bracket around the outside and a 2 plus charge. It would be a magnesium 2 plus ion. Next, let's show how an oxide ion would be formed from an oxygen atom. Oxygen has got 8 protons, 8 neutrons and 8 electrons. The eight protons and the eight neutrons would be in the nucleus and surrounded by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight electrons. Now it's got an incomplete shell. If it were to gain one, two extra electrons, then it would have a full shell. And this is in fact what it does. So it gains one, two extra electrons. It's now got a full shell. Now originally, as the atom, it had eight protons, that's eight pluses. It had uh, eight neutrons, that's no charge there, and eight electrons, that's eight minuses, so overall had zero charge. Now, as an ion, it's got eight protons, still eight plus charges, and it's got eight neutrons still, uh, no charge there, but it's now got ten electrons which means it's got 10 minus charges, and so overall has got a 2 minus charge. So when we draw that, we put a square bracket around it and put a 2 minus charge outside, or it would be the oxide iron, 2 minus. Note how the name of the negative ions changes from oxygen to oxide, uh, chlorine to chloride, whereas the name of the metal ions doesn't change. Still a magnesium iron or a sodium iron. Exam question, look at the diagram, it shows the periodic table, answer the questions. Each element can be used once, more than once, or not at all. Write the symbol of the most reactive group one metal shown above. Well, this is something we haven't covered yet, but it will be down here. It will be potassium. Write the symbol for an element with seven electrons in the outer shell. Well, it's going to be in group seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So either fluorine or chlorine, let's go for fluorine. And an atom gains two electrons to get an outer shell with eight electrons. That must mean it's already got six. So it'll be in group six. One, two, three, four, five, group six. So it's going to be either oxygen or sulfur. Let's go for oxygen. And there are our possible answers there. So what happens in a chemical reaction? For example, when sodium reacts with chlorine, the sodium atom is wanting to lose its outer electron. Where does it go? Well, of course, it goes to an atom that wants to gain an electron. Like chlorine, chlorine wants to gain an electron. So, in fact, the outer electron of sodium is transferred to the outer shell of the chlorine, and that gives us two ions, each with full shells, but of course they're now charged. And because opposite charges attract each other, the sodium ions and chloride ions are strongly attracted together by an electrostatic attraction, which is called an ionic bond. If we have an atom wanting to lose two electrons, it will quite happily react with an atom which wants to gain two electrons in a kind of one-to-one -one ratio. So when we get magnesium oxide, the formula of magnesium oxide is MgO, and that indicates that we've got a ratio of one magnesium to one oxygen. Again, this would form a strong ionic bond between the two ions, and this bond would be even stronger than the one in sodium chloride because we've got an attraction between a doubly positive and a doubly negative ion. So, an ionic bond is made when positive and negative ions attract each other with this kind of electrostatic attraction. 
When magnesium reacts with chlorine, the magnesium metal atom wants to lose two electrons to get a full shell, but each of the chlorine atoms only wants to gain one. So these will react in a ratio of one to two. Because it's reacting in a ratio of one to two, we get one magnesium ion for every two chloride ions. And so the formula is MgCl2. Here's a past paper question. This one's about ionic bonding. Look at the diagrams. They show the electronic structure of a sodium atom and a chlorine atom. Now these are called dot and cross diagrams because it's often simpler to draw dots or crosses for different uh, elements so we can tell where they've gone. They're all electrons. They're all equivalent to each other really. Complete the diagrams to show the electronic structure and charge on a sodium ion and a chloride ion. Well the sodium ion originally had two and then eight and then one. So we're going to draw two and then eight. But of course this one now has lost its outer electron to the chlorine. So that's it for the sodium. It's going to have a square bracket around the outside, but having lost a negative electron, it's got an overall positive charge. The chlorine was 287. It's now got 2 on the first shell. It's got 8 on the second shell. And it did have 7 on the third shell. But now it's gained an electron, so it's actually got 8 electrons. Having gained an electron, it's now gained a negative charge and we show that like so. And there's our answer with the correct charges of Na plus and Cl minus. Last question, magnesium oxide is an ionic compound. Magnesium Mg reacts with oxygen O2 to make magnesium oxide. Write a balanced symbol equation. Well, we're told what we're starting off with. We're starting off with Mg and we're starting off with O2. We're told we're ending up with, so after the arrow is the product MgO need to balance it so we've got one magnesium on the left and one on the right so they balance but we've got two oxygens on the left and only one on the right so we need to double that to get you two oxygens on the right but now we've got two magnesiums on the right we need to have two magnesiums on the left now we're told that magnesium has an electronic structure of 282 and oxygen 26 draw a dot and cross diagram to show the bonding in magnesium oxide and charges well, here, the magnesium, let's draw a central nucleus, has got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So that's 2, 8, but it's lost its two outer electrons. So that's now got a 2 plus charge for the magnesium. And for the oxygen, it was 2, 6. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six on the outer shell, but of course it's gained two electrons to get a full shell. So it's now two, eight. So having gained two electrons, it's now got a two minus charge, and that would be O, two minus. And there's the answers with the balanced equation. Remember you get one for getting everything in the right place and one for the balancing. And then the drawing of the two ions gets you one mark with the correct charges of 2 minus and 2 plus for the second mark.